When I was little, I used to draw like knives and swords during sacrament meeting, but my mom wouldn't let me draw during sacrament time, so that was okay. And then I started tracing like Pokemon, different kinds. And then I got on Dragon Ball Z, some kind of anime trip. You know, just like everybody does. Combo. Everybody's got to do the Dragon Ball Z, and everybody asked me, oh my gosh, that's so good. And I um, lie and said I totally drew it, but that was false. Because I did trace it, and then I fessed up later because I thought that was dumb. Then I started drawing, like, my own types of armor, which is, like... Yeah, I don't know why I kind of got into, like, World of Warcraft. I never played it, but I like the, like, Blizzard art. So I really like that. And then I just started drawing like buff guys because one of my cousins did the animation program and he came back and he showed me all these cool drawings of like buff guys and I liked how all the muscles like fit together and how cool they looked. So I started doing a lot of that and then in 8th grade I had a teacher who was obsessed with gnomes. So I started drawing a lot of gnomes and then I like combined the two and drew a lot of buff gnomes. Like with machine guns and like wife beaters on and stuff like that. And they were usually choking a turkey because that was like our rival class. We used to call them the giblets, so that was kind of cool too. And then I got into my ghetto phase because I got into high school and like 85% of my class was, or the entire school was like Hispanic. And so a lot of them like collected these little figures called homies. And so I used to draw all the homies that I could and I thought they were so cool. And everybody else thought they were really cool too. And so they started like paying me to draw them certain homies, like their favorite ones. And I started like drawing low riders and just people with bandanas. I would make everything a cholo. I made like all the veggie veggie tails cholos and Charlie Brown a cholo and like Pooh Bear and Eeyore. I made them all cholos with like bandanas and teardrops. It was really cool. And then as I kind of got a little bit more mature in what I wanted to do, I, I kind of figured out that I liked doing portraits more. And I liked making things look exaggerated or cartoony, but also making them look real. So a lot of my inspiration during my high school years, like junior and senior year, came from people like Bobby Chu, who does just a lot of like fantasy or caricature art. But also Jason Seiler, who was also really cool, I thought, because he exaggerated all the features in the human face, but he would do it in really realistic ways so it still looked real. And I thought that was interesting, but I kept learning from my teacher who taught me many different techniques like chalk pastel, oil pastel, and batik and all that kind of stuff. So I learned a lot of my technical skills from her. And then I started to portray the different cultures that I saw in different ways because I felt like a lot of the Mexicans wouldn't speak Spanish because they kind of associated it with being labeled as dumb or, or an illegal so they would try to hide their accents. So I tried to do a lot of art that they could be proud of and that they could identify with. And so that's why I started doing a lot of Mexican artwork, even though I wasn't Hispanic in any way or, or Mexican. But as I grew up also, as you can see, I look like I'm Caucasian. But in reality, I'm actually a fourth Italian, a fourth Armenian, a fourth Native American, and a fourth Filipino. And I grew up knowing all these different cultures and the Polynesian culture as well because there's a lot of Polynesians in Arizona. But I kind of struggled for a while because a lot of people would say, no, you're just white and you don't know anything and you're Hello. stupid. So that's why I did a lot of cultural art because it was my way of validating to myself that I belonged to those cultures and that I had some form of credibility as part of those cultures and could show people that I knew what I was talking about and that I would keep my cultures alive, so to speak, through my art. And so kind of like my, not really job, but my little niche in high school was that I would do a lot of the different logos for the different schools, the different um, like sports teams. They would come and ask me to do t-shirt designs for them and I would. And that was really fun to do as well, like the tennis team, the band, um, a lot of some people's like family reunions they'd ask me to do their shirts for and also I'd have my own little corner in the, in the football games where I would do tattoos with Sharpie people would just bring up pictures and they'd tell me what they would want and I would give them Sharpie tattoos and they'd pay me or the people would ask me at like little carnivals or whatever to do henna tattoos, stuff like that 
then I came to BYU and I just kind of knew I was I was technically pretty good but it was very different I took class from Alan Ludwig and Jeannie Richardson and they taught me how to use a lot of different things I'd never heard of before and we did a lot of creative projects like like this one using thicker lines and thinner lines or kind of like cubism but using India ink certain things like that or using chants or a certain procedure to come up with a work of art like this one and then I went on my mission and I was very influenced by the Mexican culture and by all the nature and the sounds and the, and the different colors and the, the poverty but also the joy and the generosity of the people the different things that I saw there really affected me and a lot of like the saintly pictures that I would see everywhere and how they would adore different saints or Jesus and how they would decorate their houses and their homes and their different kind of patterns on their bags and the colors that they had and just being there wanted me to made me feel like I needed to show them that I connected with them or I loved them and I kind of did that when I came home through art I started doing a couple of things like that school and then when I came back I needed money to go to school so I started just doing a lot of commissioned work but following my same style I guess you could say just trying to figure it out the best way to accomplish what they wanted me to but at the same time still satisfying myself and kept doing more Polynesian designs and selling those and I got quite a bit of different orders throughout the summer and I really grew I felt like and just my skill level again, and experimenting on different styles and how to do things, started doing more things on shoes. And I started looking at new inspirations. A lot of the inspiration was just street art. And a lot of the people really liked what I was doing. And more and more people started asking for things. And then I feel like this is where my hate of commissioned work came from because I just did four or five months of just straight whatever people wanted me to do and I kept trying to grow and experiment in ways that I wanted to but it was kind of stifling I felt like but people like the style that I do with the splatter and the spray paint a lot of people would ask me for different projects but I felt like I was just so busy and I wasn't really doing what I wanted to things like this I was really pleased with that went along with my culture and my style as well and that still satisfied the customer and then I kind of started a little little thing called Conti Creations that's kind of like how I promoted myself that's what my Instagram name is and on Facebook and a little website amateur thing but just so people can look and see what kind of style of whatever they want so some of the new inspirations I found were this guy his name's Retina it's just kind of like a calligraphy feel to his work really sporadic he does it all like freehand just in one book. this guy's name is Kofi um, he's also a street artist but I like his geometric lines and how deep the colors are but he's also very sporadic in how he does it I've seen a couple of videos how he does it and the abstractness of it but also the color schemes I really like as well and he does a lot of collaborations with Retina and the next guy that's coming up this guy's called El Mac and he does huge murals with Retina sometimes and he's the one that kind of got me on the put the circle on the head because it kind of makes the person holy as he says and this guy's name is Dan 23 he's also a street artist that comes from France and he's the one that got me on the style of the splatter and the, and the spray paint and also this kind of graffiti feel but also the colors and just the energy you can feel it coming off of the musicians or the famous people like this one Jimi Hendrix so I've done a lot of those and this next guy is called Gabriel Moreno he's an illustrator out of Spain and I just like his line work and I like the realisticness of it all and how different it is I'm also enjoying the forms that he gets in his different kind of drawings that he has and how big they are and now I'm here in uh, college back from my mission and I'm learning a lot about contemporary art sometimes I just feel lost because I honestly feel like I don't know very much at all about contemporary art or, or 
how to work through an idea very well, or I guess I've been doing it my whole life as I've done this project, I could see that, but I didn't really know how to express it or put it into words or really identify why I was doing certain things other than I just liked them. But now looking back on it, I can kind of understand why I do certain things, but I'm excited to continue learning and eventually figure out what I really want to accomplish with, with what I'm doing.